Months of preparation, sleepless nights, and hours of machining and testing all come down to this, competition. The whole basis of this competition um, is to give engineering students a more hands-on approach uh, to uh, problem solving. Uh, that's what an engineer is, is a problem solver. But with 80 combustion teams in just four days to demonstrate a reliable, cost-efficient, and high-performance car, only one can be the best. It's no easy street proving that here at the Lincoln FSAE competition, each day brings a new set of obstacles, and the objective is to find the best solution. That's game time. That's like, you know, you're on the pitcher's mound and you got to figure out, how do I strike this guy out? The first challenge? Getting through the tech inspection proving that the car sticks to the rules that govern the competition and is safe to drive. At this point, the team must be prepared for anything. A lot of tech judges are, even if you pass all the, the big stuff, they're always going to find little nitpicky stuff to get you on. In this case, the team... We only had a few problems with uh, the overflow tanks. That's the device used to catch water from the engine cooling system. The judges couldn't see it and decided one would need to be attached to the outside before the car could pass tech. A quick fix for this team, and from there, it looked like smooth sailing. From the tilt test... We were very close on that. I seen the car kind of go up, and then you could see underneath the tire for a second that came back down. To the noise test, or the brake inspection. Brakes went really well this year compared to last year or at Michigan. We couldn't get that one wheel to lock up at Michigan at all and missed acceleration and skid pad. The team passed with relative ease over the course of the next day. And the team throw Here, Green means go, and now the team must prove the car doesn't just look good, but it can handle on the track too. I mean, we don't build a race car to just show, we want to compete with it. But the team hit a speed bump along the way. The last event is endurance, a 22 kilometer test of the car's durability and fuel efficiency. You know, you're driving out there for 20 to 24 laps, depending on how long the racetrack is. You got a driver change, you got to make sure that you don't run out of fuel you got to make sure that your lap times are competitive at the same time. That's what's going to be the biggest obstacle to face so far. And an obstacle it was, according to the team's calculations. We didn't know if the fuel was going to hold up. We didn't know if we, we had enough room in the gas tank to hold enough fuel. The solution? Put a bigger fuel neck on the gas tank to hold more gas, a fix that took the team down to the very last minute before the race. With that change and competitive track times, the chances of scoring in the top 10 looked pretty good. But just before the driver change, the unimaginable happens. Whenever he came around that last corner making a hard left, I saw both uh, back wheels hopping across the, the corner and I, I imagine that put just the entire car's weight up on the right front wheel. The result? A shared control arm. You're going to go out there, you're going to break stuff, and then that's part of racing is you break it and you fix it and you come back even better and stronger. A modest response, but definitely a devastating blow. But the point is, it's all a learning experience, one that revolves around problem solving. Take it step by step, identify the problem, uh, come up with a number of different solutions, uh, put all those different solutions through testing, um, find the best one of those and then take that and optimize that solution. You know, you learn from your mistakes and then you go on and you just make a bigger, better race car.